ask you a few questions about Sam Harris, by the way. Sure thing, buddy. I love talking about Sam Harris. What do you want to talk about? I'm in on Discord. Sure thing, buddy. Send me a message. Hello? Hey, what's up? Okay. <sighs> so, this probably won't take long, but um, I just heard previously that you said that Sam Harris never defined, like, uh, well-being at all. And I just... As far as I understand it, at least he has. So, so the way I understand it is like he defines it as pretty much the same way that you define the set of preferences that each of us have, right? And so it's sort of the fulfillment of those uh, preferences. So, so he comes from a place where he's a materialist and a, and a determinist, right? So there is only the natural world and, and all the implications of that. And so everything that relates to your well-being is sort of uh, a product of, of your brain state, right? And uh, even if we can't do it right now, but in the future, basically, we will be able to sort of measure uh, all there is to know about your well-being from the state of your brain, pretty much, right? And so uh, if you have an input like pain and one of your preferences is that you don't enjoy pain at all, well, then you'd be able to measure that in in the brain. And and so it is with, with everything. So even if you turn that around and say that you enjoy pain, well, then the function would, would be different, right? And so I, I see that. Okay, let's say, let's say that I grant this, okay? Because this is, I've, hold on one second. Resident um, sleeper, resident. Let's say that I grant this. Yeah. I don't think that this is the claim that that um that Harris is making because this sounds like pretty basic like egoist stuff. Okay, I have preferences and I fulfill said preferences. Sam Harris seems to make much stronger claims that he can say that we ought pursue like the maximizing preferences for all of humanity. It seems like he tries to make a much stronger claim there. And my evidence for this is that let's say that what you're saying is true. That Sam Harris just says, well, we should all seek to maximize our preferences. Why did he need to write a book on that? Why not just say like, oh look, like this is literally just egoism. That's all it is. Like it seems like he's trying to create or thinks he's created something far more unique there. He needs to write a book because you need to address like a lot of standard problems uh, in ethics, like uh, the trolley problem and so on. How do we actually solve all these, these standard cases using the method that he is using? And because like it, most people don't really think that you can get from an is to an ought, which you can't, but you can get from two is to an odd. Wait, which wait. I can exp yeah, explain that. Uh, okay, so so this is sort of the argument, not really that Harris makes, but um, that uh, Lawrence Cross, I think it's called, uh, is usually making. And it, it, if you had a have set goal, and you know the state of the world, then science can tell you how to get there, right? Because it, we, we can. Uh, if you if you have two paths A and B and A will lead to one outcome and, and B will lead to the other, then you can sort of determine which outcome will, will be the best, right? So I, I feel like, and I don't want to misinterpret somebody, especially if it's like a better philosopher, but um, like I feel like oh, he's a scientist. Oh, okay. That that those types of ought statements that seems like a linguistic equivalency to me that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. So let me give you a difference. So if you want to. Um, if you want to lift a weight above your head, okay, you need to ha be able to lift a certain amount of weight. I don't believe that that type of, of ought, like, or, or, or that type of should, like you should do something to accomplish something else, is the same as a moral should. Um, because in one, we're speaking of virtues, and then in the other, we're speaking of accomplishing a goal. So, like, I think these are two very different statements. Or, or like, rather, like, say, just say to throw a ball. If you want to throw a ball across the yard, you should throw you you should you know reel back and, and wind up and, and throw the ball that type of should is a different should because it's not speaking of of, of an action that's virtuous it's just a speaking of accomplishing a goal and to take it one step back to where it is a moral question how about the question of like should you even value that goal that would be the moral question so i don't i don't believe that this is taking multiple is's and getting to an ought i think that it just it, it presupposes the ought by stating a goal but the, but the real ought question is why should we value that goal in and of itself, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's definitely true. And, and the way that Harris sort of solved this question is just by saying, what else could you value outside of well-being? And, and you can sort of answer that question if you, if you actually have it. 
uh, on hand. Like it's sort of an, a, an axiom that everyone <coughs> actually wants to fulfill their desires, whatever they may be, right? And that seems reasonable to most people. I mean, uh, you, you can't really. Sure, sure, sure. I haven't okay, heard yeah, a yeah, good answer. Quick. Okay, yeah, I understand, I understand. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm not going to disagree. We probably agree on 99.99% of things you're going to say, okay? Like, well, you know, like, is there anything else we should value besides well-being, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? The answer to that is probably no, right? I don't know if there's a better answer than that. But the difference is the strength of the claim that Sam Harris is making, okay? It comes to, it's the same thing as my arguments with Rem about, like, um, uh, uh, about, like, knowing, if we can know about the nature of our existence, right? My, my answer, when it comes to moral questions, right, I generally say we can't know about these types of things. However, we can make some assumptions and work from there. That's the, that's the difference. But Sam Harris seems to be unsatisfied with that, where he says, well, hold on. Like, I'm not just going to assume that my position is true. I know that my position is 100% true, and I can chase some sort of objective morality because I can use science to discover what is objectively morally true. That's the that's the whole issue with Sam. So all of this no, talking no, no, around... No, no. The he, he, he does make the action. Uh, he, he does say that it is a claim that your value will be... Like many people have actually asked him that question, like, how, how do we know we should value that? And he say, and his answer is, there's nothing else to value. Uh, so, so well, that's has, not true, though. Address, there's uh, plenty of else to value. We could value no well-being. We could value a state of, uh, uh, of murdering or killing everybody. Well, no, because that, that would go against your... Uh, well, yeah, if your preferences are to, to kill people... Well, no, 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 no. The, the saying that we ought to satisfy our preferences, that's a moral statement. Saying that we ought to satisfy, and that is unjustified. This is the whole thing. Harris has contributed nothing unique to the realm of philosophy, because as soon as you start to back up and ask a question, like... Well, why ought we value well-being? We either go to some weird egoist thing, or I, maybe we can get to like Kantian imperatives, like categorical norms or something. Like nothing that Harris is contributing is, is new. He just presupposes the question, or, or, or presupposes the answer, and then pretends that he solved it by constantly begging the question, right? Like, well, how do we know that well-being is the best? Because that's the best state of being of every creature. Like, well-being is the best state of every conscious. Creature. Well, what does best mean? How do we value what is best? Well, we because it's the best thing. Like that's the problem. Like. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe you're right. Maybe I need to think about it more. But uh, whatever the last sort of, interview it, it, I watched it, it, with it, Harris and another guy, it like summarized it perfectly. Where the other guy was basically just telling Harris, like, "Listen, dude, you can't justify it. Like, let's just assume this and move on." But Harris, like, does not understand this point that his whole philosophy is constantly circular. Like, I, I, funny is, I don't know if you watched me watch that video. If someone in chat has linked that video, it was a really good. Finally, somebody like tries to nail Harris down for like five minutes on like, "Listen, you're trying to say that we should value well-being, but you don't realize that that's a more Moral statement that, that you're claiming you have justification for, but you don't. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, it was Sean Carroll. Yeah, I, I, I think you're reasonable, but but if I don't know, it, it just feels like a lot of philosophers, uh, philosophers that Harris are sort of arguing against uh, take this notion of. Uh, I, I think Sam Harris comes out of a place where he's frustrated that he can't make moral claims like where people in the Middle East and let's say all the atrocities committed by Islam and so on. Uh, that you can't really speak up against that morally. No, no, but you absolutely can. That's the problem. And this is why I can't imagine anybody that like studies or does philosophy academically must kill themselves when they listen to Sam Harris say these. You can absolutely make moral statements without having to resort to Sam Harris's weird fucking scientism or whatever. You can absolutely be, you can even be a moral anti-realist and still construct moral systems that will allow you to condemn other people. Like you can totally do that. You don't, you don't absolutely need like proper justification from an axiomatic or, or to destroy all a prioris or whatever to create a moral system in order to criticize other people. You can absolutely do it. But for some reason, Sam Harris doesn't see, either acknowledge this or understand this. But but don't you still need to like make the action of valuing well-being? Uh, otherwise, you can't sure, really you get can. anywhere, right? But the thing is that Harris doesn't axiomatically do that. He feels like he's justified at using science. That's the thing. I, I feel you're wrong on this. I, I think I've uh, heard you, him okay, say like, well, like, many times. Yeah, if you feel that I'm wrong on this, then my question is, tell me like what Sam Harris defines as well-being, and then tell me why we ought value well-being. Sam Harris does never answers these questions. And like, if you feel like he, I'm wrong, then you would say, like, oh, well, well-being is defined as such, and this is why we we absolutely should value it. You, But you can never give me those answers. Uh, uh, okay, I'll try okay. to address it. So uh, I, I think you're correct that he never says, uh, I can't speak. Uh, he can't give any justification for why we ought value well-being because it cannot be done. But he has defined well-being as far as 
as well-being can sort of be defined in in the sense that he always makes uh, an analogy to health, right? So health. Yeah, I know he makes these seems... analogies to health because it's the only type of analogy that he can make because all he can do is beg the question. So Sam Harris, a uh, Sam Harris response to this would be, <laughs> "Well-being, Destiny, put your hand on a stove and tell me what happens. That's well-being." Okay, well, how about this? I create two worlds: one in which the woman is subservient to the man and serves the man, but both people feel fulfilled, and another world where men and men, men and women are treated equally. Tell me which one is a greater state of well-being. Sam can never answer a difficult question like that. Or any actual moral question aside from very obvious things that are literally like reflex neurons, right? Like, well, kick yourself in the balls and tell me if that's well-being. Not to mention the fact that you can even use some of these more basic examples to see if they're correct. How about stabbing somebody in the arm? Is that a, is that a, a thing of well-being? Well, I don't know. In the terms of vaccinations, we seem to say yes. What about in terms of getting tattoos? Well, I mean, it's vanity, but we make the trip, right? Like, these are all very difficult questions that are totally valid that Harris's system can't answer. This weird appeal to like he's basically saying we need to be healthy and fit like and even that is a value statement that not necessarily everybody would agree with what about people that eat a lot of sugar that that damage their bodies etc sorry i'm not trying to get shelby sorry go ahead no uh, that's fine uh okay so i think you can actually uh figure out in, in many of the cases like what what would benefit you the most if you are a determinist and uh and um, okay so let's do the simple one let's do the so, very so, simple example of eating sugar then tell me how sam harris would argue that i'm somebody that wants to consume enough sugar to give me diabetes what is the moral thing here what ought i value okay well if if you sort of concede that that you're interested in in the well in your own well-being mm -hmm. right you can sort of and everything is deterministic, then you can figure out what state would grant you the most happiness, right? Sure. So tell me which happiness I should value more, living more healthy until 70 and 80 and not enjoying sugary foods or enjoying sugary sweet foods my entire life and maybe dying 10 years earlier of diabetes. Okay. Well, the, the one that maximizes your well-being or all, I think. Well, yeah, but how do you define well-being here? Is it the happiness and pleasure you gain through the recreational activity of eating food with friends and families and enjoying food your whole life, or is it, or is it living longer? The, the, the problem is that what I'm asking you, science can never give us the answer to these questions, and Harris won't acknowledge this. There's no way I can run a scientific test to determine which thing we should weigh more than the other, because these are moral questions. These are philosophical questions. There's no way you could ever use science to measure a brain state and give me an answer here, and this is why I never hear Harris appeal to an actual difficult problem to solve. What about something like exercise, right? Using Harris is definitely not in as much as well, as good a shape as he can be, right? Now, why is that? Does he not value his well-being, or is it because he likes to do other things rather than exercise or work out? Or is this a vice and he's actually acting in a non-virtuous way according to his own moral system? Like, what would his answer be there? Okay, you have actually convinced me. Uh, I was just wrong. Sure. There's no way to actually figure that out. So I eventually would disagree with Harris, but I would disagree in, in a slightly different way. So I'll just tell you what, what I think the problem was and, and then uh, uh, I'll go again. So mm -hmm. if like, let's assume that you could actually do that. Um, do the thing that I suggested early on, where you can sort of figure out what path you should uh, choose to maximize your own well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, then you still have to max. Uh, th then everything becomes a, uh, a function, uh, um, a maximization problem across all human beings that live on Earth, right? But one one person's happiness can be another person's uh, misfortune, right? And so there's no way to actually figure out how you actually maximize it across all human beings without introducing some sort of value-based system, right? Of course, because but then what you're talking about is basic consequentialism or, or, or utilitarianism, right? How do we maximize the utility across all of humanity? And then we weigh people's, we, we create axioms to let us value some things over other things, and then we measure, um, you know, how we do that. So for instance, in the case of like gang rape, right? Or in the case of, we'll say rape, right? One person is being made happy, but another person is being made sad, obviously, right? Well, we would argue that because of how we axiomatically value things, um, that we value a person's autonomy and lifelong happiness over the temporary happiness of somebody that's raping somebody. So we would say this act is morally wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, sort of right. But but I uh, think that the question is still up in the air whether or not uh, utilitarianism like modulates all the other things that you could value, such as fairness, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you could sacrifice one human being for the benefit of all the others, but uh, 
it, it's not clear whether or not utilitarianism actually modulates that at all. It, it could be, right, because most people don't want actually to live in a society where they could be sacrificed for the greater good, so to speak. Sure, but there's uh, even, but even, yeah. there are even like rural utilitarianists would agree with this. Where, um, so for instance, an interesting an act utilitarian and a rural utilitarian. An act utilitarian might say something like, sacrificing one to save four is always good because it's obviously, you know, you just do the math. One for four is good. But a rural utilitarian might say, well, if we craft that rule for society, nobody's going to go to the fucking hospital because they're worried they're going to get murdered for their organs, right? So we actually wouldn't say we can sacrifice one to save four. That would be even though maybe like a very strict like act utilitarian would say yes, a rural utilitarian would say this is a bad rule for society. So consequentialism can even take into account those types of things, right? Yeah, I agree. And, and mm -hmm. I, I thought this is where the main problem was. And, and I thought you could actually maximize it for the individual human being. But uh, yeah, you changed my mind. So uh, sure. I, I there, there's don't a have really good. Else to say. Yeah, there's a really good debate with um, Sean Carroll and, and um, Sam Harris where they pretty much talk about this. And it's like all Sean Carroll is trying to say is that, like, dude, all you need to do is um, all you need to do is just put a fucking axiom here and then we can talk about interesting things. But Harris is obsessed with trying to logically prove like his moral system is objectively correct, which is absurd. It would It's kind of like getting into a debate about the nature of existence, right? Can you know that the reality that you live in is real? The answer to that is absolutely no. You can never know that. We can't know anything about physical objects, only what our senses convey to us. However, it is totally reasonable for us to assume that it's true and then work from there. But that's different, right? I'll make the assumption that the reality that my senses conveyed to me is probably real, um, and then I'll work from there. But I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna make a claim as strong as I can know the nature of physical objects. I would never say that because I can't do that. I can only operate with what my senses convey to me. But then there'll be somebody with like Harris in the room where everybody's trying to have a conversation like, okay, well, how should we act in the physical world? And Harris is like, no, 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 guys, listen up. I can know about the physical universe. I can know about physical objects. Like, no, you can't dude like just say no and then we'll move on from there it's fine like you don't have to 100 percent prove this to have a good conversation about it i think that's the problem we can actually watch yeah. the the i'll watch the sean carroll thing after this if you want to listen with us but sure yeah sure uh, okay i uh, actually yeah i agree with the moral thing but but mm -hmm. re with regards to like what we can know to be true i actually think that harris conceded that point many times like sure. he often says that the only thing that we can know is that we have that I myself have uh, experiences? Consciousness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you have to like assume that everything can sort of unfold from there. Uh, so, so he says that many times. But, but given that what you observe is is reliable, then we can make can assumptions sort of all, about the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, so on. So, so I don't think he's he's retarded in, in that regard. Sure, like, yeah. just in the moral sense. But yeah, no, I agree. He would, hopefully would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, he's a neuroscientist, so I I would imagine he has to. Yeah, 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 for sure. Actually, a, a random thing, mm -hmm. it, it it's not really related to this at all, but it's something I've been thinking about lately. Like, no one really understands consciousness. And um. Yeah, it's a really fucking hard thing, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's really interesting also. Like, one of the things that Sam Harris often talks about is um, that we have no free will at all and i don't know if you have actually talked about this or not yeah i agree 100 percent. Uh, i don't i believe the whole concept of free will is absolutely absurd Unle unless I, I you think... are unless you believe in like a religion or something then you can kind of get away with it but yeah okay so so i'm an atheist if you if you hadn't guessed but but um um i, w I was sold on it initially completely as well and and it's sort of been proven that on a low level we don't have free will right if, if you if you are given like a very simple choice, like do, do you want to drink milk or water right now, right? The, the brain sort of makes the decision before you're even aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure if that actually scales up to larger decisions. Like if you're contemplating whether or not, let's say you want to go to university or uh, I don't know, become a business manager or something like that. Sure, so basically like, like this, this is the channel. Or sorry, go ahead, you can finish. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, so the reason that that was really introduced into my mind was because like it, it seems like we would have consciousness for a reason because there are other complex systems that at least doesn't seem to be conscious like like uh, mushrooms and, and so on that are actually very intelligent in, in the way that they um, uh, I don't know the English word for it but let's just say live whatever um, uh, but it, it seems like they're not conscious. Um, even that so, is like that. Even that is content, um, contentious. Um, 
Like, yeah, it, it might actually. Be, yeah, because I don't know how it we even like define it would be there for a reason, right? Because otherwise, why would we have gotten consciousness along the way through evolution, right? If it doesn't serve any purpose, and if we don't have any free will, then why is it there, right? Well, wait. Well, hold on. You've made a lot of like really loaded claims. So evolution doesn't give us things with a purpose, or even have a necessary purpose that guides it, right? Evolution is just traits are randomly mutated and are kind of passed along. And generally, the thing that helps you produce the most offspring are the traits that are selected for and passed along. There doesn't necessarily have to be a, any reason. Like when you use that word, it makes it sound like there's a lot more going on in that process than. What well, is if consciousness doesn't help us, like if it doesn't serve any purpose at all and if we don't have free will it, it's basically pointless right it doesn't help us survive in any way or shape or form pa it, it well, just seems weird that, that it, it would be a by byproduct of evolution that doesn't really do anything i mean it could be a byproduct that's entirely possible there are things that are byproducts of evolution it, that... it could be but but it, it should at least give you pause i think when, when deciding whether or not like free will is, is a thing or not not because it doesn't seem like it's sort of the same, like where some Harris can tell, like uh, from the very Destiny, simple cases, on like the kill uh, should you put your hand uh, on the stove or not? Right? It's not obvious Dude, that it would actually scale to the harder problems right now. Like, uh, of Go mor morality. It, it seems like Trending it's the same with free will here, YouTube just because, or... like in in the low level examples, it's obvious that we don't have free will. It, it it's not obvious, uh, at least not as obvious, I would argue, that we actually don't have free will, like at all. Well, okay, wait, wait. So, okay, there's so much going on here. Um, okay, so just firstly, even if I grant everything you just said about consciousness and all of that, that has nothing to do with free will, right? You, you can still have consciousness and all that shit and not have any free will. Here, here's like the basic challenge to free will if yeah. you're like, um, if you're not religious, I guess, or if you're a physicalist or a materialist. Um, the thing is that like, when you say that like conscious is very complicated like here, here would be the analogy okay so i believe that everything that exists can be reduced to physical systems including our consciousness should be reducible to some sort of physical system um yeah i agree jesus fuck okay sorry um so the thing is davis how the fuck do i get to this fucking guy so the thing is um if everything is reducible to physical systems then um what you h how do you get a decision or how do you get something out of a conscious process that wasn't reliant on on what existed before like can you point to anything in the physical universe that functions that way besides consciousness Thanks for all the content buddy nathander no i'm not sure how that's relevant well because what because a conscious mind is something that exists in the physical universe and every single physical thing is reliant on prior causes so why would a mind be different than that Yeah, I guess it wouldn't. I don't yeah, know. There's it's no so way... hard when we know so little. Well, we, we might know little, but like, again, it comes down to whether or not you assume, it, it, like, I mean, whether it's a physical process or not. If Now, if you believe in souls or something different, then there might be like another realm or another universe um, that, that, that maybe we draw that inspiration from that's like divine. But um, in terms of, but, but, it, but in terms of like, if you don't believe that, it's very hard to get like a, some, some type of thing that's like, does that make sense what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm kind of talking around this, but like... If uh, I roll a rock down it, a hill... It feels like you're saying, like, because I'm a materialist, then I must believe that the consciousness is part of... Uh, like every, any it would be world. just like every other physical system. Everything that's part of the physical world is, like, uh, deterministic, and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's no room for, for actually making choices other than... Yeah, of course. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not sure. The, the, the reason it gives me so much pause is because it, it feels weird that we would have consciousness, and it's like... Wait, why do you say that? When you say that, why do you say it feels weird? It, it feels weird that it would be just a random byproduct of, of evolution. Well, like, no, no, let's without... say it's not. Let's say that we have consciousness. Why, just the fact that we have consciousness, why the, Why does it mean we have to have free will? Why does one have to go hand in hand with the other? No, no, that, that's not the claim I'm, I'm, I'm making. It, it just... If if we if we don't have free will and it, we have consciousness, then it doesn't serve any purpose, right? If we and have free will, wait, wait, say that again. To me. What you just if said. If we don't have free will, okay. but, but we know that we have consciousness, then consciousness doesn't serve any purpose, right? No, because why? Wait, why do you say that at all? It. What purpose would it serve if we if we don't have free will? Like, I mean, it helps us do things. you think of your consciousness as as you being able to decide between a and b right 
But if you don't have free will, then you actually don't have that ability. Sure. And wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it's just this is totally not. So, like, um, I can make a computer program that can decide between two things that has no free will. Can I? The computer program doesn't need free will to, to make decisions that benefit itself. No. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, and I and I agree. But it feels weird that we would have consciousness if it doesn't serve any purpose like that. I'm not well, no, no, but it, but, it can, but it can serve a purpose. It, the purpose can be to help us make decisions. Just because those decisions aren't necessarily like free will decisions doesn't mean they're not decisions, right? Well, but, but we have showed, right, that we only become conscious of our decisions after it has already, that the choice has already been made by the brain, right? Sure, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, doesn't that mean that we only observe us to, I mean, the consciousness only observes, um, functions as, as an observer, not something that can change what we actually do. No, the brain is way more than just your conscious thought. The brain is all the subconscious stuff beneath it too, right? And whatever you realize about your conscious thought can influence the subconscious thought later, right? Yeah, I guess, but but I'm not sure why consciousness would be needed for that. But let's, I, let's say that we that you have a human body that isn't conscious, right? It, it it would still like have all the input that we have right now, right? It would still have the the input from the eyes and the ears and and so on, right? So so all the data is, is still there. I'm not sure why the consciousness would be needed in that case. Yeah, I, I can see what role it actually fulfills, if not for free will. Okay. I yeah. I guess I just I don't understand at all. I don't see why it has to fulfill a role otherwise at all. It doesn't seem like it would need to at all. Or no, no, no. So, so we're back to my original question that it, it doesn't have to, but it seems weird that it 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 would exist without that purpose. I, okay. Anyway, that, I was just uh, I'm sort of rambling here, so <laughs> I'll I'll uh, let you be. So uh, yeah, see you later. Okay. I love everybody. Be careful.